Hey, Drew here with Plot First, and I'm going to be reviewing Eurovision Song Contest, the story of Fire Saga, starring Will Ferrell and <laughs> Rachel McAdams. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing so you can see my reviews of movies and shows. I typically do more shows, but I couldn't resist doing a review of this one. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet because I feel like you don't need me to go into an exhaustive explanation of why a film like this did or didn't work for me. But basically, I genuinely liked this film. If someone wanted to tear it apart, they probably could. I think it's pretty flawed. But for me, its pleasures outweighed those things that I could criticize it for. And I think that it benefits in particular from some interesting casting choices from legendary casting director Nina Gold, who, if you don't know who she is, I highly recommend you go look her up and you'll right away see why she's legendary. And here I feel like this film benefits a ton from casting choices. And basically this is the story of Eurovision and I am not at all familiar with it. I had never heard of it prior to the trailer for this movie. I'm sure it's kind of a big deal, but I'm just not that informed. And basically it's the story of Lars and Sigrid, these two singers from Iceland who have this dream to sing in this Eurovision song contest, but they don't really have a shot because even within their country, they're not they're small country, they're not anywhere near the top of the list of contenders to be in the competition, but after some unusual twists of fate, they find themselves there and competing with competitors, including Dan Stevens, Russian singer, among others. And as they become more famous, they have to deal with their romantic feelings for each other and what they really aspire to be, artists, or famous. Um, so this isn't a very serious movie, obviously. I feel like it's a lot of sketches, and I think its biggest crime is that it's just not that funny, and I don't know if that's just me. I think maybe people that are more familiar with Eurovision might get the parodies and the spoofs better than I do, but I tend to suspect that the reason I didn't find it that funny is because it's trading in a lot of stereotypes that I'm just not familiar with. Um, I, I read in a review that there's a lot of stereotypes, for instance, of Icelandic people, and I just wouldn't know enough about Icelandic people to know what the stereotypes about them were. But like I said, I think this film, uh, which Will Ferrell has a writing credit on it, and I think that that might be part of why it's not as funny is because I was reading in the trivia that he has a great fondness for Eurovision, that he's been watching it for a long time. And I suspect that perhaps this is more of a tribute to Eurovision than an actual spoof or a parody. If you don't like Pitch Perfect, you probably won't like this movie because it's surprisingly sincere in I feel like the musical numbers, like I feel like a lot of the musical numbers with Rachel McAdams, who is not singing for herself, I did look this up, she is being dubbed by uh, a s singer from another country, and these, but these songs are, they're very pleasant and entertaining and I enjoyed them, and there's some amusing sight gags during these sequences, but for the most part they're pretty sincere in the way that they're portrayed, so if you don't want to watch a bunch of music video-like sequences, even if there's an element of humor to them, this might not be your thing, because there is a lot of singing in this movie. But I always find that uh, a musical-type movie, which I guess this technically isn't because there is an in-film reason for them to be singing these songs, so it's technically a, a song with, it's a film with musical numbers, not a musical but I typically find that these are high energy affairs, and I found that to be the case here. And I thought that there, a lot of people won't like this, but there's a surprisingly sincere romance between uh, Sigrid and Lars, and I felt that this was the highlight of the film. I feel like Rachel McAdams just is 
uh, a darling here. She just is incredibly charming and effervescent in every scene that she's in. And if you're a fan of hers, you're going to love this movie, I think. Uh, she is given every bit as much screen time as Will Ferrell is. And I really felt like their relationship was something that I enjoyed, even if I get that if you want to be hypercritical, you can say that it's one-dimensional and you know exactly what's going to happen. There's not really any major conflict between these two. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was sweet and fun. And, you know, you've got other casting choices. I think the best casting choice in this movie is Dan Stevens as the singer from Russia, who may or may not be gay, um, <laughs> but there are no gay Russians, absolutely zero. So clearly he's not. I'm bad at winking. Um, but I just thought his character was hilarious. He was clearly just having a lot of fun with it. And every scene with him was golden. I thought they did some surprising things with this character. They allowed the character to be, again, surprisingly sincere for this movie. If you've seen other uh, Saturday Night Live type movies like Anchorman and Zoolander, um, then you wouldn't expect there to be anything sincere in this movie. You'd expect it to all be self-aware parodies and spoofs, but there's actually a lot of sincerity here, and I actually appreciated that. Uh, a good test of a movie like this is after I watch it and if I'm like, well, I'm going to watch this with my wife, Jordan, um, and I think I will. I'm actually looking forward to watching this with her again tonight. Even though I've just seen it, I feel like it'll be a fun watch and it'll be worth her time. So th that's my thoughts. I mean, I can understand people hating this movie. It's not a work of art by any means, but I thought personally that it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the musical numbers. And there was enough humor and chemistry between Rachel McAdams and Will Ferrell that I just found it overall enjoyable. Obviously, Will Ferrell is not breaking any new ground. I feel like him and Rachel Adams barely try to do accents. And the accents that they do do are just odd. I, I couldn't, it wasn't consistent at all. Uh, I have a little bit of a pet peeve about accents. I couldn't tell if this was the type of movie where if you enjoyed Eurovision and if you... Uh, were from Iceland or any of the countries represented if you would enjoy this film more or less. Uh, I know that like I grew up in Mexico and people in that country enjoy Nacho Libre I think even more than people in the US do because even though it kind of has it's a funny film it's not really making fun of their culture it's kind of a homage to it it's kind of a love letter to uh, a lot of aspects of Mexican culture. So I can't tell if that's how this movie will be perceived or if it will be otherwise. It certainly doesn't uh, portray Americans in a particularly flattering light, and that didn't bother me in the slightest bit, maybe just because Will Ferrell is American and I know that he's speaking in love when he makes these jokes. Uh, probably the scenes that got the funniest reaction to me actually were the scenes where he was roasting these American tourists in Europe I thought those scenes were pretty funny. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you thought it wasn't funny enough, if you enjoy movies of this type, uh, what you thought of Rachel McAdams in this. Let me know your thoughts. As I said, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And as always, you can watch more videos right now.